So I'm here looking at a number of artifacts that have been donated from history of emergency medicine and EMS. There's a lot of history and a lot of great stories that have come through this. And in particular, one of the things that comes to um, my attention is this book. This is a copy of the first Nancy Caroline's Emergency Care and Transportation of the Sick and Injured. And this textbook, of which we still have new versions going out, the history that's in here is just absolutely remarkable. And if you go back to where I hail from in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, Dr. Peter Saffer, the father of CPR, um, was in Pittsburgh. And he was on a pseudo rampage and cared because his daughter um, had died from prolonged issues with asthma and things. And he, that's where he came out with CPR and trying to do first aid and a lot. And during a time where there's a lot of segregation fighting in the 60s and 70s, out came uh, an ambulance service that really was the first or among the first where non-physicians were in the streets providing advanced medical care and doing procedures that otherwise physicians would do. And one of the first EMS systems in the civilian world that started was actually Freedom House in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And that was almost like a social experiment and proof saying that, you know, everybody needs care and you can take these people that for the most part from segregation and, and civil rights injustices couldn't work um, and weren't being educated. And so they started an annual service for the Hill District and the first medical director was Dr. Peter Saffer. Freedom House is a major historical starting point for EMS as we know it. In fact, a lot of the paramedics, and I am saying paramedics doing advanced stuff, not ju just EMTs, but paramedics have gone on to be Pittsburgh EMS uh, paramedics once Freedom House was kind of absolved and they started the official citywide system, of Pittsburgh EMS as we know it. In fact, uh, former EMS assistant chief, John Moon, I remember when he was one of the crew chiefs um, he retired as an assistant EMS chief in 2009. He was one of the original paramedics at Freedom House. And Dr. Nancy Caroline was just so passionate about being able to train people um, to provide advanced medical care. Um, had weekly meetings and, and workshops with them and taught them how to intubate and do EKGs and electrical therapy. Um, and that's where this book stemmed from. This is. This is the first textbook of its kind doing advanced medical care and advanced medical procedures to train paramedics and non-physicians to do things out of the hospital. You look through this and the, the thought and the caring that went through here and the advanced thought processes that Dr. Caroline put into it to teach common folk is incredible. And that this was the start of advanced out of hospital care and paramedic care as we know it. And it was right around the same time when we had some of the first paramedics in Florida and Dr. Nagel um, doing things here. So this is one of the most amazing things that I see here with this national, you know, some of the archives from the National EMS Museum. And we have it right here in Florida, in our headquarters for the Florida Chapter of Emergency Physicians and the Florida Association of EMS Physicians, Medical Directors, or EMLRC. It's, it's incredibly able to hold this, um, especially knowing where uh, the history behind it. In fact, Dr. Caroline wrote this book for her people. It became standard for a lot of things. And she, along with some of my great peers who I'm still in close touch with, Dr. Stewart, Dr. Walt Stoy, um, went on to write the national standard curriculum for EMS, as we know it, that still stands um, today with some changes. But uh, yeah, this, this was the starting point.